guys and welcome back to another video on my channel if you are new here my name is Sharon and I'm so happy that you are here if you are returning thank you so much for coming back to the channel and supporting me via your view today's video topic is going to be touching on Cameron Turner if you don't know who that is she is a 21 year old youtuber with a channel titled cam and fam and it looks like she was a teen mom she has two daughters and she recently posted a video titled the dark side of family vlogging a lot of people have been covering this video and offering their perspective kind of breaking down the video and when I watched these clips it kind of resonated with me simply because I also was a teen mom and I also started my channel documenting my experience so I, I thought it would be interesting to kind of parallel her experience with mine and kind of offer my perspective I'm not saying that I'm right and I'm not saying that I'm wrong this is just my channel where I come to share and speak my mind. So if that sounds interesting to you, then please keep on watching. Okay, so welcome back. Before I get started on breaking down Cameron's video, I wanted to touch on a few points. And the main one being is I'm starting to notice a lot more YouTubers come forward and be more transparent and sharing their authentic experience behind behind the scenes. Um, I know the first person that comes to mind is Brittany Murrow when she first freaked out and said she was like not being a family vlogger anymore and she erased all of her videos from her YouTube and only left the one video um, where she said she's no longer going to be family vlogging which has totally changed but I digress. The point that I wanted to make was that in that video she addressed that she felt a lot of pressure behind having to keep up with the content that other family vloggers were making. Um, the next person that comes to mind is Shaylee. Um, she's also a content creator that has been on the platform for a long time and was actually friends with a lot of these YouTubers and she also touched on the same topic of it being a lot of pressure, a lot of the stuff is staged, a lot of the stuff, you know, you it's not so much driven by living an authentic and whole lifestyle. It's more driven by what's going to give me the most views, what's going to generate me the most money. And obviously there's child exploitation that's thrown into the mix as well. You have all these parents filming and trading their child's privacy to generate an income not just for themselves but to also be able to support the family and that is a lot of pressure. With all that being said, I do find it interesting that Cameron's video got so much coverage because there is literally a video with the same exact title posted in August of 2021, so a few months ago, by Haley and Family, which is titled The Dark Side of Family Vlogging, Why I'm Quitting After 10 Years, My Experience. I know at the time Josh shared that video as well, but he didn't cover it, but he did cover this video by Cam and Fam, and a lot of other content creators have also done the same. So again, I do find it interesting that Haley shared the same exact thing, but now this other person is getting a lot of coverage. And it could be a lot of factors. Not everybody covers, you know, the same exact content. But I just kind of wanted to bring that up because I did see the title and I was like, that looks awfully familiar. And that is why it looked familiar to me. So I did watch a lot of her videos because I did want to get a little bit more context. Just going through her channel, I can see that she still has a lot of family vlogger type content and I don't know if she means that going forward she will no longer be a family vlogger. She didn't necessarily touch on child exploitation. She mainly just said that the reason why she was stepping away from family vlogging was because everything was so staged and it was a lot of pressure to keep up with um, to be happy and pretend to be happy all the time. So I don't know if child exploitation necessarily has a f or plays a factor in her decision. I do see that there's still a lot of family vlogger type content and I'm not necessarily sure that she's ready to lose that income that she's getting from all these other videos. So again, I'm not sure if she meant she's going to stop family vlogging going forward or if she's going to be cleaning house of her YouTube channel. I did go through her channel and I wanted to play her cam fam family intro. Um, it's interesting to me because a lot of these teen mom like intro videos all sound the same to me and at the time that I made my own I realized that I basically say, said the same exact thing like I want to make memories I want to film these things and 
Now looking back, I'm not so sure that it was a genuine feeling or if I was just saying that because that's what everybody else was saying and I was just trying to look for an excuse to make my channel legitimate. So it's interesting because again, I've watched these intro videos and they all have the same exact sort of verbiage and tone to them. So I wanted to play that for you so you guys can see. I will also be playing my video, which is totally cringe. It's actually still live on my channel. I, that's one of the videos I did not private, specifically for the purpose of trying to remain transparent in my roots and where my channel started. But let's play the video. Welcome back to Cam and Fam. Today, I just wanted to do a quick little intro video to just explain what my channel's all about and my goals for this channel. There are three main reasons why I made this channel. The first one is to document all of the memories I'm making. I document all the memories that I'm making. And I know lots of people say that. I even said that in my first video and it's like, is it though? Because you can make memories without filming it. You really can trust me <laughs> but it's just an interesting take also i want to point out that this young lady was born in 2001 oh she's the same age as my little sister and just that kind of messes with my mind a little bit i want to show my videos one day to my daughter and i just want to be able to look back on these videos with her and show her all of the prepping and planning that went into her coming to this world the second reason I want to add that all of these things can be done without sharing all of those intimate details to the whole general public. The reason I made this channel is because I want to prove to everyone who has told me that I should just give her up for adoption and that she's going to have a horrible life with me, that they're all wrong and I will achieve every goal that I have set for myself, which includes finishing high school and starting my own business. That's awesome. Um, I, I do definitely think that wasn't one of the factors that I factored into why I wanted to make a channel. I honestly just wanted to connect with other people going through the same exact situation that I was going through. I wanted to be able to relate to someone. I didn't quite relate to uh, moms that had become mothers in a conventional way, in a traditional way, and I didn't relate to people my age because nobody else was walking around pregnant, nobody else was <laughs> raising a child, but I was. So it definitely was very lonely. So having that connection of just being able to relate to other people in on the internet that were going through the same experience as I was, was very just, it was like, receiving a floaty in the middle of the ocean. It felt like I had some sort of connection to something. So I do find it interesting that she, one of the reasons or one of the driving factors behind her channel was that she wanted to prove everybody wrong. She wanted to just kind of say, you know what, I'm really young, but I got this. And I think that was something that I kind of had in the back of my mind for a very long time. Um, I would read tons of stuff about motherhood and what's the best way to feed your child and all these things and a rear extended rear facing and just all of these things because I wanted to be the best mom that I could be and I didn't want my age to define me and I didn't want the teen mom stigma to stick with me. So I can understand what she, where she's coming from and also raising my beautiful daughter. And I wanna to prove to everyone that my life isn't over just because I had a kid at a young age. I am still going to do everything that I was set out to do in this world. The third reason I made this channel is to show moms of all ages that they can do it too. A YouTuber I watched called Olivia Palmer said that there's no difference between a teen mom and a mom other than their ages. A mom is a mom and they all go through the same struggles and worries. And I just want to be there for every single mom out there, whoever watches my videos. And I hope they can learn from seeing my experiences and learning from my mistakes. I just want to say that I'm not doing this for views. 
She goes on to say she's not doing it for the views and for the money. She just wants to, if she can connect with one person, then that's enough for her. And again, this is another phrase that I've heard a lot of people say, and I think I might have said it at some point in my earlier days, um, but it was a phrase that was thrown a lot. If I can change one person's life, or if I can connect with one person or help one person, then it will all be worth it. And again, I don't necessarily know if that's a genuine kind of emotion. It's just something that I do hear thrown around a lot. So I don't know. I'm a little wary of that or kind of. Um, I do want to play my video, new channel. I'm a teen mom. I filmed this on my phone, you guys, and I was so nervous. And I will never understand what possessed me to believe that I was brave enough to post this, but I did. So let's listen to the cringe together. Hey guys, um, oh my, God. my name is Sharon. I am a teen mom. I'm 18 years old and I have rec recently just become a mom. Um, my son is three months old. His He's name is tiny. Mason. And I wanted to start up this channel to film what it's like to be a teen mom. I got this idea off of Brittany and Baby. I mentioned her, but I also really watched Emily Walk and Jess Fam a lot, all the time. Those were the three YouTubers that I watched all the time. And Jessica was so different back in the day. I don't know if there's old time viewers of her, but she was just very <laughs> different. Brittany and Baby, and I know there's other teen moms on YouTube. And I just kind of wanted to film what it's like um, to be a teen mom. I know they're um, Brittany and Baby and all those other teen moms, their kids are about like a year old now. And I, my son is just three months old. He was just born in March. Let me speed this up. I talk very slow. And I thought it'd be a good idea to start filming, you know, for all you guys have, who have three month olds or two month olds and really like babies, not toddlers. Toddlers, I'm sorry. Um, so this is my first video ever, so if you could please tell me what I'm doing wrong or what I'm doing right, um, please comment below and please, please, please subscribe. Join me on this journey and if anything, um, I don't know if I said this, but it's going to help me look back on this and see how much my son has grown through that. Memories. Again, this is a phrase that I don't necessarily know if I felt it or if it was just something that I said because... I was just, that was what everybody else was saying when they were doing their intro videos. I'm doing this for the memories. But again, I don't know that, I think I was just trying to have a reason why to film and why to post my videos to the world. Yeah, uh, he actually just woke up, so um, I'll show you guys. This is Liam. Um, join us on our journey. Thank you. <laughs> baby I'm so big, little I know I've also heard Josh say why are we looking to why are teen girls looking to teen mothers if you look to teen mothers on YouTube then your parents have failed you um I will be there for my parent or for my daughter if she gets pregnant there's no need for her to go to YouTube personally I had tons of support my mom was there my dad was there um, they offered to help me financially and I know my husband at the time was working um, and we just wanted to move out on our own and not necessarily take the burden on, but be accountable for the mistake that we had done, getting pregnant without being married, without being financially ready. Um, and we wanted to take that accountability and be able to say, okay, we put ourselves in the situation, let's move forward and let's, let's make it work. So, um, we definitely had lots of support. Um, but again, I was looking to YouTube because it was very lonely. My parents were there for me and they could only do so much. It's really hard to be able to get comfort from people that don't necessarily understand what you're going through. So personally, um, I thought it was very helpful to listen to other moms that were in my same situation. And I know there's a lot of conversation of, oh, well, these teen moms are glamorizing their experience. And I do, I do see that perspective, but I also, I know for myself, speaking for myself personally, I really made it a point to 
say, look, like this isn't easy. This is hard work. Uh, I think I even filmed when I was sad because I felt unfulfilled just being a stay-at-home mom. I felt unfulfilled not going to school and pursuing an education, not being able to make an income to help support my household. Um, I did share all of those things on my channel. Um, and of course my son and, and other private details, but I do remember not glamorizing and specifically making a video of, I'll play it for you guys. So, I was so young. I was like 18 at this point. Guys, so if you guys don't like hearing me talk, then don't watch this video because it's probably gonna be really boring for you. But anyway, I just wanted to talk to you guys and be real because I kind of feel like in other videos or in all my videos and all my vlogs that I film, I kind of show us being like this picture perfect family and um, being super happy all the time, 24-7. Which, Which we, we are. are. We are a very happy family. We are. We were very happy, but there was a lot of behind the scenes that I would never film. Obviously, I would try my best not to film, like, the arguments, the stressing out over money, like, are we going to be able to pay rent? Um, oh, shoot, we can't buy our child more clothes right now because we can't afford that. Those little details were never um, shown on the camera because I always wanted to portray the best image that I could, but I also wanted in the in the same breath I wanted to be relatable and share my hardship so I do understand it's hard <laughs> being a content creator is hard not because it's hard work but it's like what do you share when is sharing too much um I just it it never really was something that I pursued full time. Even back then, if you're an OG subscriber, you know that I would post for a few months consist consistently and then I wouldn't post for like three weeks and then I'd be gone and then I'd come back. And there was a lot of that because behind the scenes, I wasn't always okay. Um, so um, I kind of feel like I leave out how difficult it is to be a parent, especially being a young parent or a teen parent. I just, I just wanted to talk to you guys about like how things happened, like how I got pregnant. I think I'm gonna give you guys a little bit of a backstory. I in that video I talk about protection. I talk about um, the importance of protection and being very, very careful. I also talk about just because you got pregnant doesn't mean you have to stay in that relationship. And what I mean by that is a lot of teen relationships, they're usually a relationship that is only meant to last a few months and then it kind of fizzles out because the attraction is not there or you realize this guy's too immature. And that's more than likely not the person you're supposed to be with for the rest of your life. So what happens is a lot of times you get pregnant and you kind of feel like you're supposed to be with this person because you have a child that ties you. But I shared in this video, I don't necessarily think that you have to stay. So I don't know, that was just kind of my take. But let's watch the dark side of family vlogging. I will also link Haley's video because I do personally like her approach more just because she shares a lot of the exploitation of kids in that video and she shares um a lot of what it's like when your kids get injured the first thing that that influencers or family vloggers do is they film it because to them that's going to be a high paying video so personally i really really enjoyed her video and her insight and her perspective so definitely if you have not watched it go watch it i will link it in the description box but let's get into this video I told you. i also wanted to touch that she is a single mom now. Um, Landon, her her children's father, actually ha passed away about a little over a year ago. Um, he unalived himself and I did watch her video on that and it was very sad to watch that. Oh, I'm gonna get emotional, but it's just hard. <laughs> um, so I definitely related to him and his experience when she shared all that stuff. So, um, I just, I wanted to mention that because, you know, that's what happened and give some backstory, but it's just a very sad situation. So now she just has her two daughters and she's raising them on her own. But again, I don't have too much knowledge on her other than that. If 
feel like I could talk about them forever. I have a lot to say. So I figured it'd be fun to come on my channel, make some tea, and just sit down and talk to you guys. Pick a subject and just rant about it. So that is exactly what we're doing today. And if you guys like this style of video, maybe I'll do more. Tea time with Cam, we'll call it. So I'm going to make some tea and then we're going to get into it. Today I'm going to be talking about family vlogging as someone who no longer considers myself a family vlogger. This is my Again, she, she's saying that she does not consider herself a family vlogger, but again, as I showed before, she still has all of her family vlogger type content on her channel, so it's kind of hard to differentiate. Her daughters have their own Instagram titled Coco Dot and Dee Dee, um, where she shares her children on there, so I don't necessarily know what she is trying to get at, but we'll, we'll continue watching her video. My mug of choice today, it says Aries. I don't have like any Aries in my chart. We're gonna do a little combo of lemon drop mate tea and super berry trifecta tea. So we got like lemon berry going on. Let's cool down and then we'll do a little taste test in a second. It smells very good though, I'm excited. I guess I'll just start by talking about how I got into becoming a family vlogger and how I kind of got put in that box in the first place. In 2017, I was pregnant with my first daughter and I was obviously very scared and I didn't know what to expect of like just being a teen mom. So I turned. I do want to talk about specifically the crazy amount of growth that she received. She's at 1.6 million followers and she started vlogging consistently as a teen mom. It says her channel was created in 2010, but she started vlogging her experience in 2017. So from 2017 to now, I believe my youngest son was conceived at the end of 2017. So my son's what, four? So in a short amount of time, five years, she's amassed a following of 1 million followers. So she definitely grew pretty fast. Um, so I do want to acknowledge that. Where every teen turns to YouTube. And I saw lots of story times of how people got pregnant at a young age and how they told their parents. And there's just a lot of people like sitting down and talking about it. And it helped me a lot to just kind of mentally prepare for it all. So here I am. I do remember doing that as well. I remember seeing, it's scary, because my, my, I remember my mom telling me, okay, this is what you need to pack, this is what you need to do for your hospital bag, but you know, a lot of times you want to hear things, not just from your parents, but you want to see other real life experiences going on in real time. The reality of it is that people like reviews, people really like hearing from other people and their perspectives and their experiences and it's helpful to kind of apply their experience and their knowledge to your situation. I'm pregnant and bored. I'm doing online school. I just moved to a new place and I had no friends. And one day I just decided that I would make a YouTube channel. It's not the first YouTube channel that I made. I have like two or three out there from before I even got pregnant. One being from when I was like nine. And then I had a few videos on another channel from when I was like 15. It was just me like being dumb. <laughs> but I decided that I would start making videos about me being a pregnant teenager. Mostly because I was bored, but also because I thought it might help other people in that situation too, as it helped me when I very first got pregnant. So I started when I was like about halfway done with my pregnancy. And at that point, me and Landon were doing long distance. He wasn't in the picture. We were still together, but he wasn't in the videos. And I did watch her draw my life and it looks like um, her dad is in the military. So they traveled a lot when she was a kid. Um, she's lived in Hawaii. Um, she lived in Texas where she met Landon, her child's or her children's father. And then shortly after announcing their pregnancy, she had to relocate with her family to Florida. I guess that's where her dad was stationed. That's kind of what I gathered. But they were doing the long distance thing, which is why she's mentioning that. He stayed in Texas, obviously. They're teens and she moved with her family in Florida. So they were a few states away, but they somehow managed to make it work. And obviously, I wasn't born yet, so it was just me and my camera. But my channel was still very much centered around pregnancy and motherhood and little to do with me and who I actually am as a person. And honestly, becoming pregnant in the first place before even starting YouTube, it took over a lot of just my personality. It just kind of became who I was, was like this pregnant girl. And I didn't really feel... 
Actually, that's pretty relatable. I think that especially being at such a young age, I think when you're in your late teens into your early 20s, that's kind of where you are not necessarily defining your personality because it is already defined, but you're really defining who you think that you are, the person that you want to be. It's hard when you do that transition from, well, I'm not quite a teen, but I'm not, no, not, I'm not really quite a teenager anymore because I'm being forced to grow up because of my choices, but I'm not quite an adult because I'm still trying to figure all of this out. So I can definitely understand her perspective of, I just kind of became that pregnant girl, which is very isolating, I will say. I feel like I had much of a self-identity outside of that. So I post a few videos, they get like maybe a hundred views along with a lot of hate comments from people that I went to high school with. And then Colette was born and- That's so sad. Um, I can relate as well. I <laughs> hope that's all I will say. And she ended up being in the NICU for a while. And while I was in the NICU, that's actually when my first video blew up. No one even knew that I had my daughter yet. I had her early, but yeah, right after she was born. I saw the video, it has about 900,000 views. Um, and it looks like she had a premature baby. Um, her daughter Colette was born seven weeks early, which is interesting because my son was also a premature baby. He was born four weeks, so at 36 weeks, not super premature, but he definitely um, had some struggles with the suckling motion. He didn't know how to not latch onto my breast, but he didn't even know how to drink more formula from the little bottle nipples so it was definitely a very scary situation and time for us not to mention just the transition into motherhood but just on top of that my baby doesn't know how to eat it was very stressful i remember that on a video titled day in the life of a pregnant teen just started to get views and i remember hitting like a thousand subscribers and being like oh my gosh this is insane like i can't even believe this i did not think this would happen and it just kept growing and it didn't stop a few weeks after she was born we got settled in back home and i posted a video just introducing her and that's definitely when i started to take things more seriously not in an aspect of like trying to make money off of it i mean i knew that that potentially could happen but just knowing that there's people watching i tried to put more effort into it up the quality a bit i got a camera i got a laptop because before i was just doing it on my phone so i did that for a while I do want to add that at the point where she started family vlogging, which is 2017, all of these people like Jess Fam, OK Baby, um, all of these content creators that were teen moms were already pretty far along in their journey. Um, they were obviously making money, getting these brand deals. So I can see how at that point it is glamorizing teen pregnancy because here you have this young girl born in 2001, she's 17 years old, and all she sees is, well, look at all these other teen moms. They're generating an income. They're able to create this beautiful life just by sharing their life to, the, to YouTube. Why can't I do that too? So I don't necessarily think that her saying it wasn't money driven is true. I definitely think that there was some sort of money push behind her deciding to share because again, by the time that she became a family vlogger, all of these other moms had been doing it for years. Jess Man became a teen mom in 2009. Um, I started my channel in 2012 or 2013. Um, Brittany and Baby started filming in, in 2012. So all of these YouTubers were already pretty established. I know OK Baby started in like 2016, I wanna say. So she already kind of had a massive following. My point being is Cameron definitely had an example of what could happen if you become successful as a family vlogger on the platform. While and I was really into it. I felt very inspired. I loved making videos. I was just having the best time and I loved like engaging with everybody in the comments. There was a lot of hate, which at first I was like really upset by. And then once Landon moved in with my mom, Cause I was about three months old. The dynamic of the channel just kind of naturally changed. It was no longer just my channel about me and my baby. There was three of us now, and it definitely started to become more of what people deemed to be a family channel. And even though Colette was a very tiny baby at that point, the content started to slowly shift from just me talking about motherhood more to me showing Colette and talking about her and her growth and just going out and doing things as a family with her and also about me and Landon and our relationship. So so that's very natural, obviously. You're not gonna be pregnant forever. So of course the channel and the content changes to kind of match what your life is going through. So obviously it's very natural for the channel to kind of go in the direction of her 
since she's already sharing her real life experience to transition into now her journey into motherhood and all of these viewers and followers that she's kind of amassed through this journey want to see the baby want to see the relationship and all of these things so personally that's kind of why i don't really like vlogging because it's sharing too much of your personal life to a large audience that will dissect your life to pieces and that's not my vibe i like my privacy i love my privacy so and after we did start making money off of youtube and we moved out into our own place and that definitely upped the pressure of like this isn't just for fun anymore. You know, this is my job and I need to post these videos in order to pay rent. Because before I didn't have rent, I didn't have bills. I was living under my parents' roof still. The only thing I had to worry about was buying diapers and formula, which... I feel that a lot of teen parents specifically and young parents on the platform kind of set themselves up in this trap of sorts. You have them in a way, emotionally stunted. Uh, she seems pretty well-spoken, but I don't necessarily know her in real life, so I can't really say too much. But from what I gather, I do notice that there is a lot of young or teen parents that have been stunted emotionally, make these poor and rash decisions, um, set themselves up in a position to live this beautiful, luxurious lifestyle where you don't really have to worry about much at the cost of you sharing your personal life and your child's personal life. So it's kind of like you can't ever stop sharing because once you stop sharing, unless if you invest this money, real estate or something that can continue to generate income for you, you're kind of stuck having to continue to share your life in order to create a living for yourself. And a lot of these people don't really have any other talents outside of sharing their life on YouTube. They don't have any real life work experience as far as clocking in a nine to five. They don't have degrees. I know, I think Jess Pham has a, not a bachelor's, she has a an associate's degree from a community college but she said so herself in the podcast, being a teacher, that's not where the money is. Being a YouTuber, that's where the money is. So a lot of these people stay on the platform because they don't want to sacrifice the lifestyle that they've created for themselves. And the only way they can keep this lifestyle is by continuing to vlog. And it's interesting to see because OK Baby is in this kind of weird transition where they literally build this channel Oscar and Kira together and now that there's this separation they're kind of trapped because they have to continue to vlog even this really hard tough period of their lives with everybody else they have to share all these things because if they stop so does the money so Lane and had a job before coming so we have some money saved that's the point where the negative comments kind of started to shift from just blatant like ignorant negativity towards a teen mother just because she's a teen mother and more to people like getting really invested in like picking apart my life and my mistakes and i feel like there's a huge difference between the two between someone just making an ignorant hate comment like oh i bet your parents pay for that child because i know that they don't so it's like okay whatever you're wrong versus people making an informed hate comment about my life picking apart the dynamic between me and landon picking apart the way i talk about motherhood and just trying to frame me as a bad mom and a bad person and really just attacking my character and at the time i was still really new to it and i just really started to inter the internet is tough i'm on the internet and i'm offering my unsolicited advice um but i can understand how that's overwhelming especially being so young and receiving this overwhelming amount of not just constructive criticism but just blatant hate so that's sad and i i feel for her internalize it and it started to change the way that i made content before i was just showing our lives and who we are and just it was more genuine and then over time i started to really think about what are people going to think about this what are people going to say about this and there's certain things when filming where it's like oh can't put that in the video stupid little things that people have no good reason to pick apart but they will it's got to be really exhausting to live your life film it and then constantly in the back of your mind think what is my audience going to think of this will they like this will will they judge me for this what should i do different um the lighting in this room oh gosh there's a lot of clutter here this is not aesthetically pleasing 
it's got to be exhausting. It's like this part of your mind is constantly on and you feel like you can't live your full authentic life because you're living not for yourself and your pleasure, but you're living to fulfill the lives of all these other people, to please them, and that's not humanly possible. Everybody has a different opinion. Everybody has a different opinion on what's best and how to live your life, and you are never going to please every single person. So I, I see how that must have been hard. And so desperately to prove everyone wrong, to prove that I was a good mom, to prove that I was a good spouse. So I worked hard to portray this image for the sole purpose of being liked. And when I look back, I'm like, I was a 17 year old mom with a lot of pressure put on me to provide, to post on time, to share so much with the world, to figure out this new dynamic of we're both parents, how do we parent together? How do we live together? It was my first time living on my own. And there was just so much on my plate at once, especially for a 17 year old. And I'm like, of course I wasn't perfect. If you put any 17 year old in that position, they will not handle it perfectly. They're gonna make mistakes. And you No one's perfect. Everybody makes mistakes. This is why I kind of have a, not, a hate but a dislike for vlogging not just in family vlogging but just daily vlogging you're not sharing a character's life from a show you're sharing someone's real life people make mistakes lots of mistakes the difference between me and her is that i'm doing those mistakes privately i'm being awarded that privacy and she's deciding to put it on a silver platter for a large audience 1.6 million people to dissect so yeah i don't think it's this isolated incident where 17 year olds mis make mistakes everybody makes mistakes so Deep down, like I knew that, I knew I wasn't perfect, I knew I wasn't a perfect parent, but I felt like as long as... Nobody is, nobody is a perfect parent. There's times where I wake up and you know what my kids have for breakfast? Cocoa Puffs, because I do not have time to make breakfast. I'm running out that door, trying to make sure that I have everything that I need for the day, and I'm going to work. It's hard, being a mom is hard. Being a working mom is hard, being a stay-at-home mom is hard. Being a mom in general is very hard. Being a parent in general is hard. It's just very sad. <laughs> I'm not gonna finish watching the whole thing because um, I think you guys kind of got the gist. It's a 20 minute video. I'll link it in the description box if you wanna watch the whole thing. But this whole thing, her whole sharing all of this, I'm exhausted listening to her. Not because what she's saying is boring, it's just what she's saying is exhausting. This life that she's depicting is exhausting. I can't imagine having to constantly film, film three days a week. I can barely put up a video a week. I can't imagine having to put out three videos a week, having to engage with your audience, which is very large. It's just got to be tiring. So I'm definitely happy that she's kind of acknowledging that, that she's saying, hey, it's very staged, it's very fake, it's not having a positive impact on my mental health, and this cycle needs to stop. So I definitely commend her for that. Again, I am kind of a little bit confused because her content on there, while it's all old um, content, is still reminiscent of a family channel so i'm not sure if she's gonna scrub it and start clean or if she's just gonna make the change going forward and not be a family channel so i don't know let me know what you guys think in the comments below i'm interested to hear this conversation i think we need to start talking about not just the dangers or the dark side of family vlogging but i think we need to start offering more grace to our teen mothers please feel free to share them in the comments below and i will see you guys in the next one. Bye!